Hey, my good friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. Today, we're looking at the all new 2019 Ford Ranger, a truck I've been really looking forward to test driving because it's the latest, greatest thing and a really hot segment out there. And so we're gonna show it to you inside and out. I'm gonna take it for a little bit of a drive out here in the desert and I'm gonna tell you what I really think. All right, my friends, before we get out on the test drive, I wanna talk about styling just a little bit because what we have here is the Americanized version of the global Ford Ranger pickup. This is a truck that's actually been for sale for a while in Asian markets in Europe and other places around the world. And so Ford took that truck and they Americanized it, right? They had to beef it up and make it good for America. I don't understand why they always have to do that, but. American companies just have this boner about making sure they don't bring something right off the boat to America. They have to make it our way. Nonetheless, they've done that here. They sort of tied it with the F-150 and some styling cues. We've got some nice square lines on the hood. We've got a lot of dress up going on in the front fascia. This is the FX4 Lariat. So I've got magnetic on the grill. I've got a magnetic bumper and I've got a nice skid plate visual element I'm going to call it a visual element. It's not necessarily a robust skid plate that you really want to go bashing into rocks. It looks cool though. Big tow hooks there. Wheels on this one, 18 inch magnetic also. Nice off-road tires. Now 16 inch steelies are standard on the XL. I kind of like steelies. I, I'd like to see those on a truck like this with big beefy tires. In this particular cab size, you've got a five foot box. If you get the super cab, you get the six foot box. One thing Ford didn't do here, at least not yet, is offer two wheelbases like the competitors trucks do, both Toyota and GM. You can get the six foot box or the longer box with the big cab. Not here. At the rear, Ranger across the tailgate, big tail lights. It's definitely Americanized back there compared to what you see going around the world. On this one also is the bed liner which is a spray-on option for this truck. Now, as priced, we're at $45,000.20, a little bit of change. That's where we're at. We're pretty much topped out for the Ranger. I think they've done a nice job visually. When I first saw pictures of this, I thought, oh, we waited this long for that? That's all they did? I thought it was really sort of, well, expected, right? There's nothing bold going on here, nothing groundbreaking in terms of styling, but now that I spent time with it and sort of live with this one right here, I like it. I, I kind of like it. The interior of the Ranger, too, got the Americanization treatment, which is to say, more shit. I mean, isn't that the American way? We just got to take something that might be good already and put more stuff on it. Seriously, though, uh, my first experience sitting in here was uh, one of, oh, wow, they actually made this a little bit nicer. And if you've watched my videos, you know I've not always been a big fan of Ford interiors because their lack of quality, their lack of fit and finish, their lack of any kind of continuity when it comes to finishes, different finishes all over the place. Now that is still going on here. Everyone in the room at the Ford Design Committee got their own favorite pet finish in here someplace. There's still at least a dozen different things to look at in terms of colors and finishes and sheens and things like that, but it's much better than I've seen it in other Ford products. At least they've segregated them off to their own places by themselves. What I do see here is a tasteful design that is a nice update to the global one and one that is definitely better than what I've seen in Fords in the past. So I'm happy about that. The spaciousness is good in here on par with the Chevrolet Colorado and the GMC Canyon and better than the Toyota Tacoma. And I've always complained about that current truck because that interior is still packaged very much like it was 20 years ago. Toyota hasn't really upped their game in that way. So I think this is competitive. It's going to be something that's very comfortable and has enough room for most Americans. And it has a lot of features. Here, of course, uh, we're in a fully loaded model. So I've got climate control. I've got a lot of ports to plug in devices. I've got two USB ports, two 12 volt ports, and there's a lot of space for storage. In the center console, a nice deep bin, big enough for even a Gatorade bottle or just two or three regular water bottles. Nice big storage in the glove compartment. When I sit behind the wheel, I've got a good commanding view. I can see the hood, which is nice in a truck, especially if you're gonna do off-roading, but good visibility overall, and that sense of space is here. The materials, now I touched on that already, but here in the Lariat, we have a nice soft touch dash with stitching, 
and the trims that are along the dash are tasteful looking. Uh, do they sort of rise to the $45,000 level? Mm, I don't know, but it's, it's certainly tasteful looking. Infotainment, we have the Sync 3, the latest version of it, and I've praised this before as being one of the better infotainment systems out there. It's easy to use, it's fully featured, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, a lot of different stuff. The only thing this doesn't have is a 360 degree camera, but the camera that's in it does work pretty well. We've also got the Ford Standard Corporate Instrument Cluster. Now, this isn't a bad instrument cluster. It does have information on it. I mean, it's got two LED screens on either side of a single dial. My problem with it is that it's the same instrument cluster that's in literally everything Ford builds in almost every car, almost every SUV, and I'm just getting tired of looking at it. Ford needs to do something different, in my opinion. It's just a pet peeve. These seats are very comfortable, as is the seating position. Ranger stamped right into the leather hides. They're power adjustable to some extent. The recline is still a manual adjustment, but lumbar and the forward slide and the height is a power adjustment. They're heated seats, but no cooled seats here. Your rear seat passengers are gonna be pretty happy if you have the crew cab. Now these seats are set for my height, which is about 5'8 or 5'9, depending on the day. Actually, it's depending on what I'm wearing as far as boots or shoes. But if your passengers are uh, sitting behind someone my size, they're gonna be pretty happy. As you can see, I have plenty of leg room, a little bit of space here. Now, if you have somebody that was six foot two up front, might be a little tighter back here. I'm very pleased with this back seat area. Unlike the Toyota Tacoma, which is cramped no matter what you do, this has a nice seating height and a nice sense of space back here, very much on par with the Chevrolet Colorado and GMC Canyon. As far as power, you have two USB ports. You've got an AC 110 volt outlet. No 12 volt ports though. Not a big deal. When it comes to actually folding this seat to get more cargo or gear back here, this lower cushion folds upward and you can also fold the seat back forward, but it doesn't come down flat to give you an actual platform effect. It's really about getting to access things that are behind the seat. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with this interior. As I said before, I've never really been a, a big fan of Ford interiors because generally they've been pretty crappy in the way of fit and finish and finishes in general. But I, I'm actually pretty impressed here. They've done a good job. You can see they've, they've given a big E for effort to be uh, what I believe could very well be best in class if compared to Chevrolet and Toyota. It just is a step up and, and better than I expected. So, how does this thing drive? Well, to start with, the first thing we have to talk about is the powertrain. Ford sort of did a bold move, as they used to call it, offering only one powertrain in this truck, a 2.3 liter four-cylinder engine turbocharged with a standard 10-speed automatic transmission, 270 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. Not necessarily class-leading, the Chevrolet offers a lot more power in their V6, and Toyota offers both four-cylinder and the V6 as well as the Chevy here. This is the powertrain you get. Question is, how does it go? So we're gonna come to a complete stop here. Make sure I have a clear runway ahead of me and behind me. Don't want anybody watching. And 60. Is adequate now you might have noticed there there was a little bit of a lag right off the start that's in part to the drive-by-wire throttle but also the turbocharger sort of getting its wind power is adequate though and around town I have found that it's actually pretty good going from stoplight to stoplight this 10-speed automatic transmission I think works pretty well I've liked it in every vehicle I've tested and and it's pretty well matched to this engine you get a downshift immediately when you ask for it, and it works pretty good. A lot of people are concerned about these multi-speed transmissions because they feel they're gonna be hunting around all the time. That just isn't so, I have found, and especially with this transmission because it can skip gears. It doesn't have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It can go uh, from one, it can skip a few gears at a time when it warrants. The main thing about the 10 gears is having a gear ratio spread from starting out to having uh, all of that overdrive going to save fuel. And that gets us to fuel economy. This is rated in the 4x4 at 20 MPG city, 24 MPG highway, and 22 MPG combined. In my week with it, I got 20 city, exactly what it said, and I got 
21 combined. So not quite as much there, but in fairness, I've had the AC on all week long in this thing because it's 110 degrees outside this week here in Arizona. It's freaking hot. So uh, I'm happy with the MPG. I think the power is adequate. I think the only thing when it comes to power in this powertrain is is some people might want the refinement of a V6, the, the smoothness that a V6 can offer, where here you've got that four-cylinder buzz. Cattle guard that well, not everybody might be used to, but I think going down the road, this is something that we're going to find across the board in a lot of these vehicles, four cylinders. So powertrain, I'm impressed in some ways, but uh, I'm still a little bit concerned that they're not offering any other options just yet. On the topic of handling, I've had a full week with this truck to spend in the city around town, stop and go out here on the highway at speed, and as you'll see in a moment, doing a little bit of off-roading. And what I found is that this truck is quieter, more refined, much more feel solid than any generation of Ranger before it. And let's be honest, the last generation Ranger, even though it's been a while since we've seen it, it was a pretty steaming pile in my opinion. I never really saw that truck as being much more than an agricultural piece. That said, here we have a truck that Ford's done a lot to make refined enough for our market and most importantly refined enough to compete against the Chevrolet Colorado, which is a pretty high bar in my opinion when it comes to handling and road manners. Uh, the Toyota Tacoma, not so much. It's, it's still leaning a little bit agriculture um, in my opinion, not, not quite as refined as this. This is very quiet, feels very solid at speed. Um, the one thing I will point out that I've noticed is the damping in the front suspension. I get a lot of float and bounciness, especially at speed out here on the highway. When you're accelerating, it really likes to sort of float a little bit. Now, when it comes to cornering, this is a vehicle that you can really throw into a curve and there's plenty of grip and it feels comfortable, it feels predictable, even though it is doing a lot of this bouncing thing that I think, I think the damping could be fixed and retuned a little bit. That's my first blush on the handling, at least here on the pavement. The Desert Washboard Road is a place that I bring any truck or SUV. I really want to ring out and see how well put together it is, how well sorted is the chassis. Did they tune this thing to be stiff and solid and, and comfortable, or is it just a big POS? You'd be surprised. What I'm finding out here is Ford has actually done a pretty good job of building in some refinement and isolation into this chassis. That usually translates to a lot of rubber bushings. <laughs> but it's a stiff chassis and the tuning on the suspension is such that I'm not getting any rattling or shuddering in the suspension. Uh, I don't feel any rattling and looseness in the steering going over this rhythmic vibrating surface that honestly some vehicles that bring out here it just makes them feel like a big POS and I'm not getting that here and that goes to some level of compliance in the suspension but moreover it goes to a good solid structure. Four door cab tends to be a little bit stiffer and a little bit more resilient to this than the super cab so that is worth pointing out I'm not driving the super cab to get a feel for that. But what I am driving here does impress me and getting on the rough stuff here and going around these curves, uh, I'm pretty happy with the way this feels. It's actually a little bit flingable to uh, sort of get going around some of these gravel curves. On my tight little trail out here, this is not hardcore off-roading, but this is a great way to see how nimble this is and see how well the suspension and the chassis handles the rougher stuff, like if you lived on a farm or you just drove out in the country quite a bit. My first impression here is that this is well bolted together. I'm not getting any clunking or noises from the suspension going over these rough bumps. It's very well isolated, very rubbery feeling. I love that off-road in a truck. In fact, I'm going a lot faster through here than I do in some of the trucks I bring out here, and I'm just, I'm not getting beat to death at all. The suspension is still a little bouncy in the front like I talked about on the pavement, but this is, uh, this is a very comfortable truck to just sort of go, whew, go uh, happy-go-lucky out here in the wild. In fact, I just went through that whole thing a lot faster than I have in most any other truck. Definitely better than the Toyota Tacoma, and um, I actually think a little bit better than the Chevrolet Colorado. I'm impressed. Okay, my good friends, it's time to wrap this thing up. You saw the test drive, you saw the truck. 
Uh, now for my three key takeaways on this windy, hot day out here in the desert. First one is, this is a good first act. Good first act, opening show. Uh, I think that they've got a good starting point here to really compete in this segment. We've got a truck that uh, has good quality, it's got good looks. I think even though it's only got one engine here, it's a good, good, it's a good place to start. Start, you know it's right down the middle Ford chose the middle ground they didn't go left or right they just went right down the middle of what they believe most people are gonna buy and they started selling it right three trim grades one engine one wheelbase that's where we're at and it's a good package it's a good place to start I think there's a lot of room to improve um, but this is a truck that I think is going to be very competitive if you simply look at nuts and bolts features and price uh, that said my second key takeaway is options I want more options here okay so it's a good first act but now it's time in the coming years to add things like another engine option I don't know what that would be maybe a diesel that'd be nice maybe a v6 now I doubt Ford's gonna just go and put a v6 in this thing unless it's gonna be an EcoBoost v6 like like maybe uh, the 2.7, like we see in some of the other vehicles with a little over 300 horsepower, so not crazy like the 3.5. Uh, maybe the Raptor. We get the Raptor Ranger in other parts of the world. Now that's got a diesel there, uh, but I could see them doing the Raptor here with the 2.7 liter Turbo V6. That would be a nice package. And I suspect that will come down the line. Uh, bed sizes. Be nice to see a longer bed with this thing in a larger cab different wheelbases, maybe even a standard cab, stuff like that. And I think as, as maybe Ford sort of feels this market and goes, oh, we're a little more confident, maybe it's not so risky, they might do something like that. Um, and my third takeaway is that this thing's solid. I mean, this thing drives really nice out here in the desert on this rough stuff. I was very surprised. If I'm honest, I was fully expecting this thing to be a POS like my dad's Ranger, you know? This isn't your dad's Ranger. This is a solid, well-bolted together truck that has a pretty sophisticated suspension. It's refined. The only thing, as we talked about in the test drive, is the damper settings on the front suspension. Um, not quite as robust as I personally like, but Ford obviously believes that most of the buyers of this truck like the floaty sensation. I just don't. Outside of that, uh, this truck does very well off-road. It feels solid, it feels a quality, and I think that's what Ford needs because their reputation for that hasn't always been, you know what I'm saying? Not your dad's Ranger, it's not a POS. So those are my three key takeaways, and that last one really, um, if I only had one, not your dad's Ranger. There you go. So as tested, 45,000, we're pretty much here at the top. And uh, luckily it starts at 24 and that's kind of that's kind of the one I like, you know, a nice XL with steel wheels, four by four and sort of play with it a little bit, get some nice big chunky tires. Whew, now I'm getting into wet dreamland. Does that mean it's on my buy list? Uh, they fix that front suspension, it just might be. So there you go. Now, if you like the video you just saw, I invite you to see another one of mine right there, big square, or better yet, subscribe to my YouTube channel right there on the round logo. Either way, Stay tuned.